What happens when a wide receiver leads the league in rushing stats but doesn't have a single catch? This video has all the answers. Now, this isn't a Ty Montgomery, Tavon Austin switching positions deal. Our wide receiver will lead the league in rushing, but he will only ever line up as a receiver, making sure that he is a wide receiver that is rushing the ball, not a running back that's actually a wide receiver. That means end arounds, people. So what we'll need is a wide receiver, but not just any old wide receiver. No, he's got to be qualified. So what about Cordero Patterson, who led all receivers in rushing yards and carries this season? But he's got too many carries out of the backfield. We need a better representative. So what about rookie DJ Moore? He's had an impressive 13.2 yards per carry on his 13 attempts rushing the ball. That's our man. So the next part is the easiest part. Moore just needs to run a whole bunch of end arounds all season long. Come snow, sun, rain, whatever, he'll be running those end arounds and nothing else time and time again. We want him to shatter the single season records for yards and touchdowns and of course he'll obliterate the record for most yards per touch. Sorry Calvin. Now that he knows what he's got to do and has had a whole season to do it, let's see how he got on. So we're here in the stats, we've avoided all the news, anything else that could possibly give away what's happened and we're just going to take a look at exactly what he did this season, rushing the ball. 97 attempts, 2,539 yards is actually 30 yards better, exactly 30 yards better than Chris Johnson's previous record of 2,509 yards for most yards from scrimmage in a single season. The 26.2 yards per carry is 10.1 yards better than Calvin Johnson's previous record of yards per touch in a single season. Of course, the 2,500 yards is better than Eric Dickerson's 2,105 yards rushing in a single season. The 30 touchdowns is actually only two better than LaDainian Tomlinson's record of 28 rushing touchdowns in a single season. As you can see, we averaged 158 yards per game. Now, we could have gone a lot higher, but we didn't want to go a lot higher. We're trying to keep this within the realms of reality. Now, of course, it isn't because he got two and a half thousand yards rushing and didn't touch the ball a single time all season long as a receiver. So there you can see zero, zero, absolutely everything zero, but he played 16 games. So of course it's not realistic, but we didn't want to go, you know, oh, what happens if he's got 5,000 yards rushing? Of course, so actually to be fair, I don't know, it'd probably be the same things that happen, but we didn't want to blow it out of proportion. We want to know what happens when, when a guy who is a receiver, his position is wide receiver, but all of his stats are rushing stats and he's obviously the best player in the NFL, that's for sure. But his position is wide receiver. Does that mean he wins best wide receiver despite not having any receiving stats? Because I've seen people win best defender and be a linebacker, but they didn't win best linebacker, which obviously makes very little sense. But that's because some of their stats also did things that went beyond being a linebacker. I can only assume. I don't really know how they figure those ones out. But that's what we're interested in. Can DJ Moore win a best position award? considering the fact that everything he's done does not fit his position. Moreover, can he become the first wide receiver in NFL history to win NFL MVP? Now, plenty of running backs, not plenty of running backs, but running backs have done it before. No wide receiver has, but he's got running back stats, so maybe that'll help him. Maybe he could win it even if he had really good receiving stats, but that's not what this is about. But more importantly, yeah, he's got impressive stats, but how does he stack up to the rest of the NFL? That's what we're going to find out right now. Well, it's just under 1,000 yards more than the next best rusher. It's 21 yards more per carry than the next best. It's, well, what's the best there? 16. So it's 14 touchdowns, almost twice as many as the next best in touchdowns. So without a doubt, he is the best rusher in the NFL, but he's not a running back. He's not the best running back in the NFL receiving. Now, of course, he doesn't come up here, but let's see how the best receivers did. Devontae Adams leads the league with 1,300 yards, 14 yards per reception. So, he's got 11 yards more per touch than the best wide receiver. He's got, again, a whole bunch more, 1,200 more yards than the best wide receiver. He's got 22 touchdowns more than the best wide receiver. So, he is, in terms of the numbers he's putting up, the best wide receiver in the NFL. He has got more yards, more touchdowns, more yards per touch than the best wide receiver in the NFL, or the best statistically the best. Of, of course, technically D.D. Westbrook. Let's take a look at who's actually got the most touchdowns. That's 13. It's still 17 touchdowns more, obviously, the yards per... Again, better than Vincent Smith with his 12 receptions at 20. He's just better than all of these people, obviously. 
So the only question left to ask is, is that rewarded? So next up, we're going to see how many upgrade points you get for doing everything that you did. 17 skill points available. Now, of course, that means that he is somewhere. It could be the Pro Bowl. It could be a, it could be MVP. Who knows? But he gets 17 skill points. So he will be a 97 rated wide receiver after this. But he's never caught a football in the NFL. And let's just do that right now, actually. So in terms of progression, it obviously does not matter that he's never caught a single football in his entire time in the NFL because he's now a 97 rated wide receiver. Now, if we were to edit him, I'm not going to do that in case it messes up any of the um, awards and stuff. But if we were to edit him and make him a running back, I'd be interested to see his stance. But we already know it's just going to be whatever base it was before we upgraded him because all we upgraded really were receiving stats. So let's do the big thing. Let's reveal the yearly awards. Will he be the NFL's first MVP at wide receiver? Will he be the best wide receiver in the NFL? Let's find out right now. NFL MVP. It is DJ Moore, the first ever wide receiver to win the award. Let's see who the coach of the year is. Of course, it's Ron Rivera for that one. But now comes the big one. Offensive player of the year, no surprise there, of course. Offensive rookie of the year, again, no surprise. Just racking up awards, but this is the big one. I don't, obviously he can't be best running back. Yes, he's got the most rushing stats, but he's just not a running back. It's positional. The question is, can he be the best wide receiver? He has never caught a football in the NFL. He's never played the role of an actual wide receiver. He's just gotten the ball on an end around and put it in the end zone. Is he the best wide receiver in the NFL or is he just the NFL MVP that floats between positions? No, he is in fact the best wide receiver in the NFL. The question is answered. As long as you get a whole bunch of yards regardless of what they are and score a bunch of touchdowns, even if none of them are receiving stats, you are still the best wide receiver in the NFL. Now I'll be honest, I didn't expect this. I genuinely thought it would be the same situation as I've seen in the past. You look at the defensive player of the year, it's Luke Keekley at linebacker. Now this one probably will again be Luke Keekley at linebacker. No, it's not. And that's exactly what I mean. So the best defensive player in the year is Luke Keekley. He is a linebacker. He's also the best defensive player. But the best linebacker is Khalil Mack because Khalil Mack will have gotten a lot of sacks. Okay, now almost as if they wanted to help me prove my point, I'm actually slightly confused here. Luke Kuechly isn't even in the top 10 for best linebackers. Now that could be maybe Luke Kuechly got a whole bunch of interceptions and that's why he gets highly rated for Defensive Player of the Year because he's got great defensive stats but not the ones that are way most friendly towards linebackers like sacks and tackles, potentially. Maybe they made him a defensive end, obviously not. So who knows what's going on there but that is exactly my point. So you can be the best defensive player, but it does not mean you are the best player in your position. So of course we were the best offensive player in the NFL. There's no doubt about that. We broke multiple records regardless of positions, but it did not guarantee that we would be the best wide receiver, but he is. So here's the final part we care about. It's the Pro Bowl roster. And now again, of course, we know he's locked into his position at this point. So we can only assume he'll obviously be the wide receiver at the number one spot and that's exactly what he is that's the final thing we wanted to see but at the point of already winning the award it was already proven that was more of a backup thing in case he didn't win best wide receiver would he still be in the pro bowl as a wide receiver now i never expected that dj moore would show up in the best running back category but as i mentioned with the defensive players and how that works weirdly i wouldn't have been as surprised and as a matter of fact i really expected him to not be in the best wide receiver category. Now the question is, if we were to take a wide receiver but switch him to the running back position in the formation and make him run normal running plays, does it make a difference? Now I'm going to go out on a limb and say absolutely not because Madden probably has no clue between the difference of the plays called. It just knows the final stats in terms of figuring out the end of year awards. But the question I would also like to ask is, what happens if you take a running back which you can make play wide receiver full time without having to change their actual position and without having to change the actual plays was if you take a running back make him a receiver all season long all he gets are receiving stats and he does exactly what dj moore did does he become the best running back in the nfl 